Hi grade 8. Welcome to our science class. I will be your teacher for today's lesson. In grade 7, you described an object's motion in terms of displacement, speed, or velocity, and acceleration. The concepts were arrived at by studying examples of uniform motion or objects moving in straight line at constant speed. Then you were also introduced to non-uniform motion where the object covers unequal distances or displacements at equal intervals of time. Let's say, when a jeepna starts moving, it speeds up. When a jeepna nears a stop sign, it slows down. The jeepney is covering different displacements at equal time intervals and hence it is not moving at a uniform velocity. In other words, the jeepney is accelerating. Most of the motions we come across in our daily life are non-uniform and the primary cause of changes in motion is force. In this lesson, you will investigate the relationship between the amount of force applied and the mass of the object to the amount of change in the object's motion. It is based on the most essential learning competency with a code s 8 ia 15 Before we directly discuss the lesson, let us have a short game. This game is entitled Picture Perfect. In this game, you will get the initial letter of each picture and then put that all together to reveal the term. These terms will be going to use in our discussion. I want you to type your answer in the comments section. I will give you 10 seconds to answer each. Are you ready? Let us start. Number 1. The correct answer is Newton. Number 2. Correct. It is law. Number 3. Very good. The answer is motion. Number 4. Great. It is inertia. Number 5. Correct. It is mass. Have you answered them correctly? Great. There was a scientist who named Sir Isaac Newton, a 17th century scientist, put forth a variety of laws that explain why objects move, or don't move, as they do. He came up with three laws which have become known as Newton's three laws of motion. The focus of this lesson is about Newton's first law of motion, sometimes referred to as the law of inertia. Newton's first law of motion is often stated as, an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. There are two clauses or parts to this statement, one that predicts the behavior of stationary objects and the other that predicts the behavior of moving objects. The two parts are summarized in the following diagram. When forces are balanced in stationary objects, when we say stationary it means not moving, no movement and no acceleration is involved, therefore they will remain at rest. On the other side, when forces are balanced in moving objects, moving objects has a velocity which is not equal to 0 meter per second, and there is no acceleration involved, then the objects will remain moving in the same speed and direction. The behavior of all objects based on this diagram can be described by saying that objects tend to keep on doing what they're doing. Remember that there is an important condition that must be met in order for the first law to be applicable to any given motion. The condition is described by the phrase, unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. As the long as the forces are balanced, the first law of motion applies. It is the natural tendency of objects to resist changes in their state of motion. This tendency to resist changes in their state of motion is described as inertia. Inertia the property of massive bodies to resist changes in their state of motion. All objects resist changes in their state of motion. All objects have this tendency, they have inertia. But do some objects have more of a tendency to resist changes than others? Absolutely yes. The tendency of an object to resist changes in its state of motion varies with mass. 
Mass is that quantity that is solely dependent upon the inertia of an object. The more inertia that an object has, the more mass that it has. A more massive object has a greater tendency to resist changes in its state of motion. Applying that concept, let us have an activity. This activity is entitled massive inertia, you will determine which object has a greater inertia. Each object is represented by reaction icon, and that reaction icon will be used to share what will be your answer. You can click the reaction icon, or you may send it through the comment section. I will give you 5 seconds to choose the correct answer. Let's start. Number 1. Correct. Number 2. Great. Number 3. That's right. Number 4. Very good. Number 5. Amazing grade 8. Let us check your understanding about the lesson. I want you to complete the each statement by typing your answer i the comments section. I will give you two minutes to answer the following. Your time starts now. Let us check your answer. Number 1, blank is the property of a passive object to resist changes in its state of motion. If your answer is inertia, then you are correct. Number 2, blank is a quantity that is dependent upon the inertia of an object. If your answer is mass, you are correct. Number 3, the more inertia that an object has, the blank mass that it has. If your answer is more, you are right. Number 4, the first law of motion is also known as blank. If your answer is law of inertia, you are great. Number 5, law of inertia states that an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion with the same speed and in the same direction, unless acted upon by in blank. If your answer is unbalanced force, you are correct. This is the summary of our lesson for today. For your exit pass, I want you to explain by typing your answer in the comments section about this situation. Alfred spends most Sunday afternoons at rest on the sofa playing mobile games and consuming large quantities of food. What could be the possible effect, if any, does this practice have upon his inertia? Explain. You have one minute to share your 
Answer. If your answer is this, Alfred S. Inertia will increase. Alfred will increase his mass if he makes a habit of this. And if his mass increases, then his inertia increases. Great job grade 8. For your additional activities, you can try this at home. Easy inertia science experiments with coins? If you have questions about this lesson, just leave them in the comment section and I will try to answer them as much as I can. That's end the topic for today. Thank you and see you in the next lesson.